Okay, Aronian versus Grizzchuk. Uh, a lot of people uh, seem to believe Aronian might be the favourite uh, to win the candidates. So as white, he kicks off with d4, and we have the Grunfield defence, which uh, Kasparov switched to when he was losing uh, to Karpov in one of the World Championships. And he made it a very popular defensive weapon against d4. So it's the early d5 here. And personally, I, I'm very uncomfortable actually uh, playing this mainline Groomfield because it's like you have to take great care over the center. And um, it doesn't seem that attacking quite often, but there are dynamic ways of playing it. And there are seemingly, uh, uh, you know, paradoxes that White uses in, in the new variations being uh, seen, uh, like um, the idea that does does White have to try and maintain d4, or can White actually play d takes c5 at some point, which might offer you know different advantages. So there there is creativity. You don't have to just um, uh, kind of babysit that that centre as as this game shows. Uh, but there's initial initial babysitting, of course, because Black's really. Uh, putting it under fire, um, and now uh, we see b6. So saying to white, do you, do you really want to play d5? You know, I'll get the e5 score, or, or maybe just knight a5. Actually, so white's uh, got to be careful what he's doing with the pawns here in the centre. But actually, here we do see, um, you know, a self um, Fragmentation, you know, we got we got two fragmented pawns here. D takes c5. So what does it actually offer? Well, um, actually, let, let's stick a, an engine on here. I mean, I guess this is all theory, but uh, I, I think most of us don't aren't really familiar with it. But if um, let's see, uh, taking white gets queen takes d8, and here. Either bishop takes c5 or rook ad1 with advantage. So black's idea actually um, is is not really to take here, but uh, actually to play queen c7. Mind you, Houdini does like actually b takes c c5, but is switching now to queen c7. So queen c7 is using the gamut in a slightly better way apparently. But now white plays knight d4 with advantage. So that's what white gets, the use of the d4 square by playing d takes c5. I mean currently um, there's no rook on d8 as well, so the knight actually is threatening maybe knight b5 as well. So knight e5, knight b5. But again you might be wondering uh, is White really trying to just hold on to a pawn here? Um, isn't he going to be faced with, with pressure on his bad structure? But it depends really how, how active Black's pieces are to be able to exploit these pawns. Um, so Bishop e2, <coughs> Black plays now b takes c5. And now not Bishop takes c5. Let's see what happens. If Bishop c5, nothing spectacular, a6, and then queen c7, and then black's pieces are in a bit of a better position, maybe, uh, to regain the pawn uh, with pressure. So actually, um, white actually kicks the knight off e5, and now takes the pawn, okay. With uh, the queen unable to get access to this diagonal, it's, it's pretty safe even with the knight on g4 lurking around. Uh, knight a3. Okay, you might ask why not knight d4? I think that just allows knight e3 with advantage to black, just forking queen and rook, that's something to be avoided. Uh, so knight a3, and maybe that's kind of justifying black's play, because this looks a bit awkward, this knight here. It's not exactly, um, it needs, but it can get back into the centre with knight c4 or knight c2. So queen c7, black's got adequate pressure it would seem here. Bishop d4. Black's in no hurry to, to loosen his own king safety with an exchange of bishops. He plays e5, which is further justified at the moment with his knight on g4. So takes knight e5. Black seems to have a nice control of the e5 square. So I don't think Grizzchuk would be displeased here with his position as black, even though um, he is technically a pawn down. 
Okay, so Queen C1, Bishop G4, exchange of light squared bishops. Now Queen F4, trying to get rid of one of Black's dark square defenders, the Queen, which can go on that color and defend that color. And the Queen um, is taken, and so we have now a more simplified position. So the question now is, can Aronian use his extra pawn? Well, a bit of uh, shuffling maneuvers now. So rook fd1, king f2. Now we get quite a lot of positional play. So knight e3. So he's really solved that knight problem, you know, with these fancy maneuvers coming to in contact with the center. The knight's always good to be centralized, much more flexible and plow powerful in the center. Getting rid of the dark square bishops as well, afforded by the knight protecting um, the rook on d1. Okay. So this simplified ending, can Aronian make something of it? Apparently here, Houdini reckons that only white's only slightly better, 0 0.29. So something actually happened here. Maybe black blundered or overstretched himself with this A pawn. He, he fussed it right to A3 in this game. But uh, it was just simply munched on A3. That's the interesting thing. Uh, so black was trying to get some counterplay, obviously. But um, getting the pawn to a3, it's a bit of a liability, and it was picked up on. Not only is the pawn a liability, white's got this potentially dangerous c pawn, but the king's also coming to the rescue to try and stop this c pawn advancing. Uh, knight b4, okay, which is useful there, as well as eyeing the d5 square. Um, the king's coming to munch a3, and now white's definitely increased his advantage. Houdini really thinks white is doing well. He is technically two pawns up here uh, in, in this moment of time, but black's regaining the pawn immediately now. Knight takes e4. But still, uh, there's actually two passed pawns here, which Aronian can use. Now, when I glanced at this position yesterday when it was being played, I actually thought... Um, you know, maybe Euronian is a little bit in trouble here, but no, he is actually clearly better. Uh, the reason I thought he was in trouble is this could be double-edged. This could be a weakness as well as a strength. Um, you know, if it, it can be, it can be taken at some point. But um, no, there's there's some very nice moves now here in this position. King a4, and you know, by the king just going straight up vertically. <laughs> like a lift um it's it's improving white's position systematically now so king a6 so that, i thought that was pretty nifty just king to a6 straight up like that and um now black's trying to get his poor majority into action three to two on the king's side uh so this is tricky but houdini likes white a lot actually more than a pawn's worth here check check okay so again king b6 some herding time offering a4 here you might wonder okay what happens if rook takes a4 it's a disaster if rook a4 knight b2 and blacks i guess losing material here in all sorts of ways if check king c5 and then if rook b3, rook takes d6 is check. And here, if uh, knight c4 check, then probably the pawn is getting decisive with c7, yeah. So, okay, so the pawn can't be taken. So check instead, check, knight e4, rook a2. So look at this. This is looking now super dangerous with this a pawn uh, ready to roll forward. So rook b2 again offering a4 with both pieces able to take it now. And in fact, the knight takes it. Rook b4. So what has Aronian done? Giving back a pawn to be equal on pawns. The thing is, he's forcibly um, getting rid of the rooks with this pawn sacrifice. Could, could the rook have taken the pawn out of interest? If rook takes pawn, apparently king b7, big advantage to white. This c7 is looking very, very dangerous. So the knight took the pawn, the rooks came off, 
and it looks as though uh, is is black in trouble with the sea pawn. Well, in fact, um, h4 here actually is given as a in, in effect as a huge blunder by Houdini to move h4. In fact, king e7 is recommended, but h4 big advantage to white 2.68. So what's going on here? Why is it 2.68 here? There's a long, huge, long variation here with c7. Shall we have a quick look at it? Knight takes. Why would white be better here? These pawns, are they not going anywhere? Just following this through. Looks as though the knight's just about able to um, do something. Yeah, once the knight reaches that, then the king can come in and snatch white's pawn. And then, funny enough, we have this position where white is able to queen the h pawn. So that was clear enough. Okay, so that's why c7. Uh, possibly, uh, instead of the move played, was 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 technically winning. So actually, h3 was played at move 68. The king comes back to arrest that pawn. Knight c5, another key blunder here. Apparently, white was still better with plus 1.59 by playing the move knight e5. So knight e5, avoiding the exchange of the knights and making it tricky for black somehow. What if king d6? That's the first question. Ah, check. <coughs> pardon me, pardon me. Check. Okay, so knight takes g5, deflection. And then for c7 would be winning. So if white's able to snatch a pawn like that, then this this is too much for black to handle. Either c6 or b7 will be winning here. So that's interesting. Knight e5 sets a little uh, deflection trap. King d6, knight f7 takes g5. Now if king d8, check, check, winning f5, aha. Again, with technically a winning position, 2.46 surely would be winning. But in the game, yeah, in, in this position, knight c5 was played. After knight takes, king takes, they just agree to draw. So it's strange, Aronian had done all that effort and just blew it, it seems, according to uh, Nenjin. Of course, humans get tired. They were probably both wrecked by this part of the game. Um, and um, knight e5, it's strange, isn't it? Knight e5 at move 68 seems to offer a winning advantage, unless Houdini's getting this ending totally wrong. Um, if f4 is another try, c7, and apparently this, this is okay. Even though it looks scary for black's pawns, how is black actually um, getting compensation here? If if takes that that would be a disaster. That'd be totally equal. But in this position, white plays check, takes the pawn with check. Haha! <laughs> and this is funny. Plays knight f3 check. Wow! These knights are very very tricky. And then, then can take on g4 safely. And if takes, then takes. And this is this is apparently winning. <laughs> Believe it or not, because uh, if takes, uh, yeah, the f pawn's now queening. Um, the, the king, the king is is herding, is is shielding um, the opposition here. Uh, so you know, you just you just shield the opposition, and and then you herd the pawn forward. So that's really strange. Did Iranian really misevaluate this position? Then, in fact, knight e5 is winning here. Instead, he just allowed uh, the trade of knights. The pawns look a bit scary, as if black, yeah, is playing dynamically. The pawns are dangerous. It's a clever trick, but actually, um, it's it's questioning that trick. Um, it's it seems to be losing in all all lines so far. Uh, it seems fairly convincing, um, but it needs technical accuracy. Uh, so knight c5, and they just agree to draw. Let's have a look again at this game. 
just briefly. Uh, so Groomfield shows you don't really need to babysit your d4 pawn. You can play d takes c5 at the right moment, even if Black's treating it as a positional uh, pawn sacrifice to gain pressure. Because uh, then later, um, if you can withstand Black's pressure, exchange off queens, you've got potentially an extra pawn to herd forward. But uh, White played an awful lot of intricate maneuvers, especially with the king, I thought. Going straight up the board on the A file here was rather nifty. So this king, after snatching A3, going straight up the board to A6, and then, unfortunately, um, the kind of delicacies and accuracies uh, ran out for Aronian. Maybe he was just a bit worn out uh, in this critical position, easy for anyone of us to say with an engine, but um, knight e5 appears to be winning. Okay, so uh, comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.